Hola amigos, in today's video we'll make this topography line shader that you can see here. This version produces very crisp anti-alias lines that look great at any distance and it's also quite configurable, so you'll be able to tune it to suit your specific needs. This type of effect is pretty frequently used on map views and I had a few pending requests to do a breakdown or a tutorial about it. Remember to post a comment if you want me to know which shader or effect you would like to see next. This will be a bit shorter and easier than some of my previous videos, but not for that less educative. And without further ado, let's get started. For this tutorial, I'll be using a simple hide map terrain that I painted in a scene with no lights and an unlit material with only emissive output, just to better show the effect. But you can easily apply this on top of your own materials using any of the available shading models. We'll start the material getting the position of the pixel in world space. From there, since in Unreal the vertical coordinate is Z, we need the green component of this vector. Next, take the absolute value of this number and divide it by the new parameter. This one will control how much distance will be between each line in engine units. Give this parameter a name and a default value. For this example, I'll set it to 5000. Now we have a value that goes 1 every 5000 vertical units starting at 0, 1, 2 and so on. Next, let's take the fractional part of this number using a frac node and output the result to see how we're doing so far. Cool, now we have these repeating gradients that go from 0 to 1 vertically every 5000 units. We could use them as they are now but let's make them symmetrical instead, so we don't have those sharp contrast changes at the ends of each interval. We can easily do that multiplying the gradient by 2, subtracting 1 next, and finally getting the absolute value of the result. These operations will convert the 0 to 1 gradients into 1 to 0, then 1 again. Let's check it out in the viewport for a moment. Ok, so this gradient is basically a thick contour line, so in theory we could just compress this range using a power node with a high exponent and call it a day. That would be the lazy way, but it has some issues as we will see in a second. Even using a high value here, like a hundred or a thousand, at close distance, the lines will be a bit fuzzy and won't look great. Using a step node could be another option, but that one has its own problems. The solution, which will be familiar if you've seen my outline post-process tutorial video, is to use our all good friends the partial derivatives. Fwith is a common OpenGL function defined as the sum of the absolute value of the partial derivatives of a value with respect of the screen dimensions. I know it sounds crazy, and while it's not available as a single node in the material editor, it is easy to recreate using a few ones. First, we'll get the ddx and ddy derivatives of the gradient, then add their absolute values together. We are going to use fwidth as a delta, both adding it and subtracting it from the original value separately. Let's add a second parameter to scale this delta, multiplying it by the fwidth before these operations. This will help avoid smear lines in flat areas of the map where the height isn't changing too much. Once everything is connected, our last step is gonna be a smooth one, literally. Ugh, I'm sorry, add a smooth step node and connect the subtract output to the min input, the one from the add to max, and create a new parameter for the last input. 
This one will control the width of our lines. This form of anti-aliasing using F-width and smooth step is very interesting. I think I first heard about it years ago in a post from Inigo Kilev, amazing tech artist and the creator of Seder Toy. Excellent! Now we have a sharp looking mask that we can work with. Note that if you set the thickness of the lines to a high value, flat spots in your map might appear like line blobs, even with a very low delta scale. And this is just how topography lines work by definition, so there is not a really clean way to change without starting to add shader code that is generally frowned upon, like conditionals and such. This parameter defaults seem decent for now, so let's move on to how color the lines based on their height. This will make the map a bit easier to read and immediately see the high and low areas. We'll keep this simple by doing only a two color interpolation, but it's not hard to extend to three or more, or even map to a gradient that is defined in a separate image file. Add two vector inputs. This will be the low and high colors, and for this example, I'll just set them to red and green respectively. Next, add another two scalar parameters. We could totally use the bounding box of the object to determine the minimum and maximum height of the color map, but using two variables instead will make things a bit easier for this tutorial. In my case, I think that my terrain is about 50k units tall, so I'll set these parameters to 0 and 50,000. Here's a quick way to remap a value in a specified range to a 0 to 1 range. First, subtract the low threshold of the range from the value, then divide by the difference between the high and low thresholds, which is our range. After that, we simply have to use a linear interpolate between both colors using the remapped value as alpha. And to apply this color gradient to our line mask, a multiply operation will be enough. Let me finish setting this up so we can see the results of this. Great, this is working exactly as intended. I don't see almost any red color though, so I'll increase the minimum height until the low color value shows up a little bit. Let's look closely at these lines for a second. As I explained earlier, a key aspect of this effect is the crisp anti-alias lines. Although using DDX and DDY might sound expensive, they really aren't in modern GPUs, since the lock threads execute each pixel quad simultaneously. And with that, this effect could be over, but let's see how to add some extra detail to make it more interesting looking. I guess that we could overlay this over a color texture or something like that, but I want to focus only on this effect and not introduce any other elements. I think that I will simply duplicate the whole line mask, then rename the parameters and change them a little so we have a second set of lines every thousand units. I'll make the second set of lines a bit thinner, so the material reads better and it looks a bit more like a topographical map. Finally, we can use a max node to combine them with the main lines and check out their results. Yeah, this looks pretty cool. The thinner lines give a lot more information about the terrain surface without taking over the whole image. The next thing I want to show is to how to use the camera distance to change the parameters of the shader. For this example, I will use it only to drive the opacity of the thin lines, but feel free to experiment and use it to change things like the overall thickness, noise at close distance, or any other fun combinations. After adding some comment boxes here and there to organize the graph, add a camera position node and subtract the absolute world position from it. The length of this vector is the distance of the pixel to the camera. 
and we could remap this value like we did before to have finer control over this gradient, but for this example, I'll just simply divide the number by a new parameter. This one will be the maximum distance at which the thin lines are rendered. Next, we could 1 minus this value and use it just like that, but just in case I want to change the opacity later, I'll add another linear interpolate. The last part is to multiply the result of this lerp by the thin lines before combining them with the other ones. Remember, as I mentioned before, using the camera distance to drive some shader parameters is a very useful technique that has many applications. In the Halo Infinite map I showed earlier, for example, it is used a lot along the shader code, mostly to reduce the visual noise at close camera ranges. Let's check the effect out. Perfect, now the detail lines only show up when the camera is a bit closer to the terrain, decluttering some of the background. And we could spend some time fine-tuning the parameters or adding more stuff to it, but I think I'll move over to the last part of this video. This last bit is an unexpected bonus that I made while explaining some concepts to a friend of mine, so I made it off-camera and wasn't planning to add it to the video. But while I was working on the edits, I changed my mind in the last minute and decided to add it as a freebie. Hope you enjoy it. So I was asked how to make a terrain scan effect for a personal project, and since I had this map on my recent files and the video was already recorded, decided to use it to show them how to approach the problem. The effect in particular is much more complicated, but this was enough to get them going. Anyway. Here's the part of the graph that does this. I'm sampling the Y coordinates of each pixel and remapping them like we did with the height value when we color the lines. Then, adding that value to a scale down time and keeping the fractional part. Next, the result is passed to a power function with a high exponent to compress the range and thin the bright area. And all this is finally multiplied by a vector parameter to set the color before adding it to the rest of the material. That's all I have for today. As I promised, this was gonna be a shorter and easier video, but I hope that you enjoyed it nonetheless. If you stayed until the end, thank you for watching this tutorial. Post a comment below if you want to see a particular effect explained in detail, mine or from any other source reference. And if you like this content, please consider subscribing and clicking that like button. I know that I don't mention it often, but it helps a lot promoting these videos. See you next time.